Yay. Hello. Oh, hello. Hello, hello, hello. How hello. are you? I'm I'm wonderful. I'm lonely, but I'm oh. wonderful. And why are you lonely? I'm lonely because my <laughs> my entire family have gone on holiday. And when I say my entire family, I mean my husband and my dogs. Yes. I've gone on holiday and I just keep getting these pictures of them on a beach. Yeah. Oh, how nice. I mean, okay, we're, we're talking about Norfolk, so we're talking about the North Sea and all that kind of mm. thing. So we're not talking like Barbados or anything. Um, but they're having a very lovely time and I'm here and I'm actually having quite a nice time as well to yeah. be fair I, some um, you time yeah and I've just been I've been going off touring the bakeries of South London it's very lovely <laughs> as you do as, yeah, you as do. I do so I went to by Anna in Cheam um, and by Anna she's been there I don't know how long she's been there I think she started up pandemic-y time um, and she does things like cookie pies and brownies and blondies. And that was very nice. And then today I went over to Kew um, to the, it's not called the Maids of Honor Cafe. It's called something else. They've got like a family name, but it's been there since 1850. Mm -hmm. um, and they sell the cakes that Anne Boleyn used to eat. Wow. So today I have been Anne Boleyn, but I have managed to re retain my head. Yes. <laughs> Off with her head. <laughs> So yes, so yeah. And how about you? Actually, you have just told me you don't need to tell me it all again. No. But yes, just a busy day, busy, 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 busy. Anyway, just had a curry, so I got runny nose as well. I'll try, <laughs> try not to wipe my nose. Was it a my curry sleep. that was like instantly hot, or was it one of those curries that builds? Oh, nice. It built, but yeah. it was so good. So good. <laughs> It was only a number two on the chili. It did have four chilies on it, and it was only two. Right. So for other people, they would probably go, "What's she talking Whatever. about?" But for me, it's spicy. They say that you're meant to have milk, aren't they? But you don't drink milk, do you? No. So to because and it's something to do with the the fat in the milk cuts through the the spiciness. If you have water, so if you drink eat a curry and then you have water, the water just expands it in your mouth. Mm. whereas if you have milk it somehow cuts through the spice and cleanses your mouth mm -hmm. but you don't like milk so I don't know what I'm telling you no I don't so was... <laughs> right then right summer so, is coming summer is coming oh hold on I've done something to our I've done something to our screen so if you're watching on YouTube let me just put the banner back on that says Summer is coming. Look, there you go. Ah, oh, hooray. Summer is coming. Summer is coming in our cake businesses. Um, and if you remember, we did a one well, at the beginning of the year that yeah. spring is coming and how yeah. to prepare for spring. So we're going to do a how to prepare for summer. Are we also going to do an autumn is coming? I think we should do maybe winter and Christmas. Yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah. Although autumn, you've got like wedding fairs and things like that. And and Halloween. Yeah, yeah, maybe we should then. Maybe we should just mm. do all of them. Fireworks yeah. night. Yeah, so we're, yeah. we're done. No yeah, spoilers. Right. spoilers. <laughs> um, so we're doing, summer is coming um, because I do believe we've had two weekends without rain. Shh. <laughs> I know, right? Two whole mm. weekends without rain. And it, I mean, nice it is still weekend. freezing out there, but, you know. Mm. So I, I class the summer months to be may june july august and some of september yeah the first bit not, of september yeah but not really i think um, i always think that september the kids have gone back to school so therefore yeah. we're kind of heading towards autumn aren't we yeah yeah but yeah this is where we're sort of like yeah may onwards i would say mm -hmm. is is summer so there's quite quite a few um I've written here, summer is coming. It's time to make money. <laughs> <laughs> it is. I mean, this is traditionally our, as cake makers, our busiest yeah, period. With weddings and stuff like that. But yeah. I have got weddings this year, but I haven't got as many as I would normally have. Right. I have heard um, from various wedding suppliers that this year is quiet on the wedding mm. front mm. and that was because it's the from what i've heard is it's the the rumor is is because it is 
we have a cost of living crisis or we've yeah. had a cost of living crisis or whatever um people that want to get married don't want to go into debt mm. and so they're saving and so rather than get married this year and have a okay wedding mm. they're saving and they're going to get married next year or the year after and have an incredible wedding yeah so i must say i have had an incredible amount of inquiries for next year really so yes there yeah. you go they're yeah. coming in every day so um but consequently that means that some of my months that might have been busier yeah. are actually quieter so i could yeah, i can do find. something different yeah now i i was really surprised because i was going to refer back to a previous podcast that we did and we never did it so i was <laughs> so i was really because i thought we because to me the first thing i start thinking about summer is things like um summer fairs school fairs summer markets um and i was going to refer back to the podcast that we did on selling at fairs and markets and we haven't done one can you oh. believe that are you sure? I went right the way through the back catalogue. Okay. If anyone can correct us on that, please do. But I went right the way through the back catalogue earlier and mm. couldn't find it. So I think we should at some yeah, point. Yeah, that's a good good idea. Yeah. Um, um, I think the, I think the reason I'm getting confused is that I have got a blog post on Oh, maybe website, that's what it is. And that's one of my most viewed blog posts oh, about selling cakes at fairs and markets. So I think that's yeah. where I'm getting a bit confused. And, um, but yeah. and what about – because I've done um, my list – and I can mm -hmm. put car boot sales on it as well. Isn't that interesting? Because I've never, I've never sold at car boot sales. Yeah. Well, I, I, I have seen some people selling at car boot sales. Mm. Um. So I decided to to look up the rules and regulations to see. Um, okay. About it and everything. So you know, you tend to see people selling cakes they that are very definitely homemade goods. Yeah. That they've made. They're yep. not classed as traders. And any any of their foodstuffs that you buy cannot be consumed on the premises or on the site. But oh. if you are selling them, say as we would, as as a trader, I'm just trying to turn my telephone off because I've got to turn the sound off. Sorry. How and at that point, you mentioned yeah, yeah, it was. I was trying <laughs> to do it discreetly. <laughs> it gonna, I'm not going to let you do this discreetly. <laughs> it went fuck you. <laughs> I'm gonna let everyone know that I'm mm. doing this. <laughs> Do not disturb. There we go. So, um, but if you sell as a trader, you must ensure your food is labelled correctly, as yeah. you, you went out um, with all the um, correct ingredients and everything, mm -hmm. and has a use by date. Um, and you should also contact your local authority, um, your local council, um, for further help with the rules and regulations in that area so you right. probably still need your food sa safety and everything but if you're running as a business then you would hopefully have all of that as well yeah I mean if you're running as a business you will I suppose it's the same selling at a car boot sale as if you would sell at a market or if you yeah. sell at a school fair it's yeah. all the same rules that you are a business that is selling and producing food so therefore you are under the food standard agency's yeah. rules and regulations yeah. um, and your local council regulations for selling food yeah exactly um, and also highly recommended you get insurance um yeah i was just you dropped oh, i was gonna say that <laughs> nah, 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 nah. yeah so yeah you have to, to have to get the correct insurance as well just to make yeah. sure so good public liability and i i mean i i am doing a school fair this yeah. summer um i only do one which is my local school yeah and they ask me because they know that i have a five million public liability liability insurance. insurance yeah not everyone has five million that so they're very specific and they like to see my insurance documents yeah um i guess for their risk assessment for their insurance all yeah. their vendors have to have that five million public liability and it's not necessary that you're going to kill someone with cake no it's that if someone trips over your stand if someone yeah. trips over something while you're there do you know what i mean it's it's yeah. not just the consumption Stabs of food south in the eye with the cake slice exactly <laughs> and a freak accident cake pop down the throat that sort of thing yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah so you're, yeah. you're covered yeah and yeah. it covers you as well and it it, it it just makes sense yeah yeah and um um so, go on me me <laughs> so 
Um, also, make sure you've got the correct insurance on your car as well, or your vehicle yes. that you're transporting the goods about in. Because um, if you have an accident on the way and all of your contents of your car get completely wiped out, yeah, you you're fudged. I think also, um, if your if your car is full up with product and you're heading towards a, a venue and you have an accident and they find out you're doing this for business and you don't have business insurance, I think your insurance might be void. Really? You, oh, yeah. Because you can't turn around and go, oh, no, this was just for, yeah, for I'm, leisure. I'm the fact that I've got four million <laughs> cakes in the back of the car. Um, yeah, so yeah. if you have an accident and you get caught doing it for business, I think you would actually have void insurance if you mm. haven't got business. And most most places, most um, insurance don't charge anything extra to put no, business on. No, no, my, my insurance isn't anymore because no. I've got a business on it. You just make sure so. you write business on it. So, yeah. um, but but fairs and markets is like the the first thing I think about when I come to summer because they it's like the end of school fairs, craft fairs, um, spiritual food fairs, yeah, all that kind of thing. Yeah, country shows like big country shows yeah. happen. Uh, festivals, you're doing a couple of festivals, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, that's so right. all that all that kind of thing. Um, yeah. There are certain things that I was because I've done a lot. I've done a lot, a lot, a lot of markets. This was my main you have. thing. Yeah. You have, haven't you? Um, so I would first say if someone approaches you to do a fair or market, do your research about it. Um, because I have been stung before. And actually, do you know what? I heard on the radio yesterday, or was it today? I've heard on the radio in the last couple of days that scammers are approaching small businesses to go to craft fairs and markets taking a prepayment for the stall no. and then the market doesn't exist and that was on radio four that i heard wow, that today. that's awful yeah so do your research and make sure that the the fair or the market exists mm -hmm. that they're doing good advertising mm -hmm. that the footfall is going to be good that you've seen the presence because there's no, you know, you don't, I've turned up, I think it was like an, um, a car show years ago. It was down in Kent and I rocked up and there was all of us, all these vendors there. And I think they had like five people through the door. <gasps> so we all just like packed up and went home. Yeah. And it's cause he had, he kept telling us that this is what was going to happen, but you know, obviously he hadn't done yeah. his advertising. Yeah. Um, another thing I would say, if you're going to do a market or a school fair, Check how many other cake makers are going to be there. Yeah. One other, maybe I'd get away with. Any more than that, I wouldn't bother. Yeah, and dep it depends what you sell as well. So say mm. um, you're selling, um, the other one's selling donuts and um, hot chocolate. Yeah. But you're yeah. selling cream teas and traditional cakes. I did one once um, and I applied to sell cake. I think I was selling cupcakes at the time and they said oh, I'm really sorry we've already got someone selling cupcakes so I went okay I'll sell cookies was it all right if I come along with cookies and biscuits and so that's what I did I did cookies mm. and biscuits um oh definitely yeah because as well that people will compare you they yeah will they'll compare the prices the they'll oh, compare they're yeah. barrel down there selling them for two pounds 25 <laughs> oh and the other thing at schools quite often you get school cake yeah stands they're selling them for 25p yeah you know, you know what i mean so just check these things when you're going just, just check that hmm. is there how many other cake makers what sort of thing are they selling should will you be competing and is if it's a school one is there going to be like a cheap school because quite frankly there's no point if you do yeah yeah um, no that's I true bother. Yeah. um i'd also so say Take all your advertising, take all your marketing, take your business yeah. cards, yeah. take a pitch, a portfolio, whether it's on your phone, whether it's on an iPad, so people inquire with you. Um, take a dummy cake is usually quite yeah. good. And you must, um, you're legally required to um, display the, have you got an allergy? Yeah, all your allergens. Mm -hmm. um, very quickly, very briefly, if you are selling pre-packaged things, so you have sealed your packs, you must display all ingredients on your labels mm. with the allergens in bold. 
if you are packing, so if you've got like a tray of brownies and people go, I'll have two of them and you pick them up and put them in the bag, you don't have to have all your ingredients, but you do have to say um, what allergens there are within your bakes and that should people have any intolerances that they must ask you. And that's yeah. a trading standards thing, I think, actually. Yeah. Um, Definitely. So, yeah, just just get to, get, get to know the, the rules and regulations definitely around it um so what are the festivals that you're doing you're doing a couple of festivals aren't you i'm doing um two small ones at the moment one called gabe fest which is a friend who runs it and he i, I kind of mentioned it to him in the past oh i could do a cake stand and he um messaged me so when i uh, so i i said to him well how many are you expecting because i've said yes i'll do it yeah but i needed to plan what I was you know going to be selling and everything how many tickets have you sold and he went wow well, only 60 and I was like oh okay like that but he went <laughs> okay <laughs> okay but then he said but I always sell 400 to 600 the week before right he said, so don't panic <clears throat> so I will need to work out what I'm going to make yeah what signage I need um and um, I'm also I think I've talked about this before I'm contemplating buying a van yes so um, I don't know whether I am or not at the moment I keep looking and stuff but I can't find what I'm looking what the yeah. one that fits the box yeah um, but also if, say I do have a van um, I would need um, a license um, if it's on private land it's all right. So if it's a gay fest, and the other festival I'm doing is Jerk Jam, so right. um, because it's which you on, did it was a Jerk Jam you did last year. Last year, and it blew got, away. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so at the moment, I don't have um, a gazebo or anything. So right. I want to get a van so that I don't need to buy a gazebo and spend that money on a gazebo when I could have a van, which would be better for me. Yeah yeah um but say if i got a van and then i went to events or yeah. if i if i went selling i would probably need to get a specific license but yeah. you need to speak to your council about yeah if you're gonna well. i think it's like roadside stuff you'd have to have yeah a license. um and then but, there's certain pitches and certain places that you can go to yeah and, and there's no go zones and yeah and things like that yeah. Um, so um, you'd need to go to your local authority and to buy a street traders license. Yes. Um, unless you do it all at privately owned venues. So yeah. when when you do um, a fete or a, a festival or something like that, you have to think about how you're going to display all your mm. products as well. So I learned the hard way last year. I things had a blow away. Yeah, things blow <laughs> away. If you write everything on your chalkboard and it's raining, it all runs <laughs> off. If you write with chalk pen, it doesn't. No, no it, it was chalk pen. Oh, <laughs> it, oh. It, it was that bad. It, the weather <laughs> was that bad. Oh, dear. You have to think about what you're going to take with you. So um, if you're going to take knives, you have to make sure that they're packaged in the back of your car because if they're in the front of your car and you get stopped by the police, that's considered carrying a weapon. <laughs> so you have to make sure that you, you, you've packaged so it all the way. I'm properly. sorry I didn't get to your fate. I was in jail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got arrested because I had a knife. <laughs> Um, you have to, um, because if it's a festival, you're not going to have running water or anything like that. No, so you have the to whole make, hand. Yeah, you have to make sure thing. you've got hand washing um, yeah. area. So I, I took hand sanitizer and wet wipes with me last year. Yeah. But, but I just needed to hold my hands out in the rain and I could have just washed them. <laughs> up. Um, you have to make sure that you've got the correct packaging. for Package, your, See, packaging and all that, that's something that... Um, that was a that was a lot of trial and error when I was doing it, and it was really yeah. hit and miss. Yeah, um, and I, I got kind of got to because I used to do cupcakes, and I didn't want to keep spending money on expensive cupcake boxes. So I was yeah. using they're called Swiss trays, and then they slip into a bag. Yeah, um, and I kind of got it all sorted, but it took me 
quite a few attempts to get the right packaging. Yeah. Um, and the problem is, is that you have to spend money on the packaging to. Yeah. So yeah. And um, so I I found as well that it was raining and everything. I'm trying to be ecological, um, so all the paper bags were soggy as well, and yeah. the napkins would blow away. <laughs> Because I didn't have a napkin receptacle. Because you just think, oh, I'll just take them in the plastic thing. Yeah, and they'll be put um, on the, the table. And yeah, it's funny the... that uh, the thing that I used to get um, tripped up on a lot is that um, when I first started, I would use tablecloths. I'd have you know like a trestle table and a tablecloth, yeah. and then the tablecloths would blow or get caught. So then I started putting weights on them, and then I thought. Then I started putting pins. So I'd like wrap the table up with pins. Then I actually made my own tablecloth that was like a flat surface that was like a wipe clean surface, but then had a frilly bit around it. So it was like all these things is that I kind of learned as I went along. But the yeah. first time you do it, you kind of go, oh, I've got a tablecloth. Because always have a tablecloth because you can shove stuff under your table and hide yeah, it. Yeah, that's right. But make sure the tablecloth doesn't blow away. So safety pins is always good. So you can pin it yeah. to itself and keep it down and, and all yeah. that kind of stuff. And yeah. um, you have to think, what am I going to display my cakes in? Yeah, because isn't what... it funny that, you know, years ago, I literally used to just put them out on cake, cake plates and cake stands. Now, I wouldn't ever put anything out uncovered. No. Well, I had them under cake domes last year and yeah. a lot of them blew away <laughs> and smashed. <laughs> so you also have to make sure that you've got the correct um, facilities. If you get break anything, that you can wrap yeah. it up. Yeah. Um, have you been asked to do a risk assessment? Because I was quite often asked to do a risk assessment, which used to make me die because it was like risk assessment. Um, make sure. I think I've already got one written. Yeah, it's like but make sure I'd... the knives are, are packed away. Um, yeah. Heavy lifting, bend your knees, and it's all that kind of stuff. But yeah. quite often these things do That's ask such a good idea them. to do that again. Now, I've always been asked for my insurance. Yeah, which, yeah. Which just have I a just... risk assessment in case someone asks. Yeah. Um, yeah. The other thing is that I've done quite a few county shows or country yeah. shows, and quite often they will have a food marquee. Yeah. So they will – so you're undercover you're under their cover you just rock up like you would like a school fair yeah. um and be under under theirs it's quite often a little bit more expensive to be in the food marquee than it yeah. is to take your own gazebo and everything but if you don't have your own gazebo and you don't have all that kind of stuff mm. having a food market because people are going into the food marquee to buy food yeah you know it's it's always quite a nice place and it's quite a nice bit of camaraderie and you can always do some good bartering at the end yeah that's true. And cider. Sorry. When, so, <laughs> I've had a lot of cider for cake. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like cider. Um, oh. Malibu. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> so when you're at these fairs, markets, etc., and you're making all this money, nowadays it's less cash, but more yeah. card or yeah. Um, it's expected that you would take what's card. it called? A, a BIP transaction. Bip. Contactless. Thank you. That's the word I was looking for. <laughs> a BIP. So, I like that. I prefer yeah. that. <laughs> so but what yeah, people method? Expect you. People expect you to have contactless now. Yeah. They, they expect to not have to take cash with them. That's right. So what, what would you um, recommend? Right. Well, it's funny because I've always used Zettle. I've always, Same. always, always, always had Zettle. That, and that's probably why I've used it. Yeah. Because you do. Right, but I need to talk to you off off podcast about this because I recently because I used to have a limited company, so Daisy Cake Company used to be a limited company, yeah, and my Zettle account was set up as a limited company, yeah. Um, I've recently dissolved the limited company, yeah, and they've cancelled my account. Oh, which is so really good. weird. Can you not just create a new one? I think I'm going to have to because, but obviously you're not a limited company and you have no. Zettle, so it must be something that you can, yeah. You can do. Yeah, I um, haven't got a limited account. Yeah. yeah. But you don't even need the card reader anymore. No. Right? And you can just tap, but, people tap their phone on your phone. Yeah. Or their watches on your phone. Yeah. It's brilliant. But I will just say take your iSettle machine with you or whatever machine yeah. you use because sometimes um, it will say you must use the card. Right. And then yes. if you haven't got your iSettle machine, and sometimes the reception's 
not so great and you can't right. use it on your phone but it'll go through on the machine right so yeah. I always like to have the machine as a backup I definitely yeah. think that's a good idea I think it's it's so it's so standard now that if, if you go to like a normal market if you go to a street food market it's so standard to have like the little zettel machines well I don't know if there's is there a square another one that's square or something like yeah, that yeah there's so um, there are lots of different yeah. varieties that you but can it's, use yes you will pay a small fee and with that it's just like it's usually like five percent or something oh, like that it's it. I, I'm sure it's not that much it's, it's, a, it's it is like a really it's a small, small fee yeah yeah zettel is actually owned by paypal so that's there they would never used to be when we I first got it but it's actually owned yeah. by paypal now um and, but, yeah. and make sure you update it all before you arrive before you on go. site. <laughs> Charge it up the day before. Make sure you um, yeah. connect devices. Yeah, um, there's nothing more frustrating than being in the middle of a field and again, it needs to update, and you're like, yeah. oh, no. And put your put a list of goods into the um, yeah. items. So you've got your cupcake, your your donuts. I'm obsessed with donuts today. It's twice I've mentioned them. Um, <laughs> Is this, is this something going on in your yeah. head? <laughs> a slice of cake, your brownies, each individual yeah. thing. Because my mathematics is not great. And to just go boom, 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 and it's all done for you. It's, you don't yeah. have to worry about it. It's much yeah. easier doing it that way. And then if they ask you for a receipt, you can, it can be emailed. email them. I tell you what, um, another thing I used to do a lot with markets is, because this was back in the day, I used to charge £2.50. No, one pound fifty a cupcake. This is how long ago it yeah. was. One pound fifty a cupcake, or four for a fiver. Yeah. And the amount of four for fiver I used to sell. So if you and now, I think it would probably be two fifty a cupcake, or yeah. three for six, or something like that. Yeah. So do some kind of deal yeah. that will encourage people to go. Oh, I'll just have that extra one. And you, do you know what I mean? It's it, it's yeah. quite good to have those extra like little deals going on. Yeah. Oh, and definitely. Call it, call it a festival deal or a market deal or yeah. You know, wherever you are, call it the deal or for that. Daisy's so, deal. Yeah, and it was, so I say, you know, it's the the fair, the, the, the deal for the fair that you're doing yeah. for them. Chuck, <laughs> Chuck, <laughs> Chuck deal. Because <Jack> <laughs> I'm doing <laughs> Chuck <Jack> down. No. <laughs> I'm doing jerk down. Oh, yeah, the jerky jerk deal. That's done. Yeah, that's no, not no. <laughs> quite so great. Oh, um, right. So mostly people that will be doing fairs and markets also will be doing other cakes. Um, well, I'm talking to you now, Sammy. Yes. Right directly to you. I'm looking in your eyes. Yeah. Right? It's about planning and organisation. Well, I can <laughs> hold my hands up there. I have scheduled out the week before. Wow. In okay. both, both occasions. Okay. And I've said no cakes this yep. that week before. And uh, I'm glad you were saying that at me. Because <laughs> I am Miss Unorganisation. <laughs> but... Um, so you need to make sure you're not doing anything else. Yeah, I've actually got down. I've got if combining markets and big cakes, don't overstretch yourself. Yeah, because I mean, it's just just silly because yeah. it affects one. The Say you're doing a wedding cake. Um, yeah. If, what a stress. You can't. You know, I mean, yeah. wedding cakes are stressful enough without yeah. throwing in a market to go with yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. So don't. And going from experience from last year, look at the weather forecast. <laughs> yes. Number one. Yeah. Um, I overbaked. I was just presuming there'd be hundreds of gluten-free yeah. people there. There'd be vegans there. I didn't get asked for one vegan or one gluten-free. So maybe um, do a, a an audience kind of yeah recce of, yeah. of the type of people that you, are gonna you will to get that. if so if you've got a table and you don't have any gluten-free on it you will get one person come up to you and say have you got anything gluten-free what you've got to think of that's is that that's one person mm. okay out of all your audience but what's really difficult that from having the shop and from doing lots of fairs and markets if you offer gluten-free everyone else thinks it's not for them yeah and they buy it so yeah. for that one person 
make sure whatever you're offering is appealing to everyone. Can you remember we used to do that um that cherry scent? Oh, do you know cherry. what? I I am actually going to make that. Yeah, so it's and, like the, it's like a cherry. It's like a rich. It's, I've, it's made with polenta. It's yeah. absolutely scrummy, and it just happens to be gluten free because it doesn't have any yeah. flour. In and it. you can make it vegan as well. Yeah. And it's it's one of those things. It's like don't make don't do a normal sponge and say it's gluten free. Do something that's really indulgent, really delicious that will appeal to everyone. Because yeah. otherwise, you're left with lots of gluten free stuff. Yeah. Oh, or definitely. De definitely i had i i threw i had to throw it away what, not yeah. because if it had been a normal day and it hadn't been raining yeah i, I would have i would have sold it on i was done it yeah. too good to go but it was just utterly ruined because of yeah. the rain but i i did i think two boxes like 24 so there was yeah. 50 cupcakes i think i just broke even on that festival to, yeah. to be fair but it was a massive learning experience it your your first your first fair market festival your first or second ones will all you'll always learn yeah. so much the other thing that i would say is that we're talking about stormy weather if it's really 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 hot also be aware that people won't buy so much or don't do rocky road and brownies don't do <laughs> anything <laughs> on um minimize cream. yeah take yeah. lots of water um, if you turn up and they put you in somewhere that you know is going to get sunny, ask to be moved because the yeah. last thing you want to do, I've done it, stand there and watch the sun come round and all my cakes go meh. Yeah, and nobody's going to buy the cakes that look meh. Exactly. They so, want to buy the cakes that look oh. wow. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, do lots of planning ahead, plan, get everything ready the night before, don't be packing the, the day of the the, the thing no no and and make sure you have your box ready with all your stuff just to put in yeah. your car your table ready if you're taking the table all your signage done you don't want to get up early on the day and being no. like fuck excuse my language yeah. you don't you don't want to be in panic mode <laughs> and then get there and then the stress of setting up yeah. and finding your spot and finding because, where you're going to be and yeah because also you will have to be in there a good while before the yeah. um I think on average, yes, it's right. most of the plate ones that I did, say they it was starting at say ten o'clock, I was I usually have to be there at seven. I used to yeah. I could sit up in half an hour. I was so slick in the end, I could sit yeah. up in thirty minutes, um, and I could be out. I was always the first out as well. I was very good at packing down and getting out. Um, but they like you to be in, have moved your car somewhere safe, yeah. be ready, so they can come yeah. around and check everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. And I think a good investment, mm. which is something I'm in, going to invest in, is a good trolley. Oh, yeah. Oh, I've got a trolley out in the garage that I, we, brought, we brought it back from storage the other day. And Jules went, what's this? And it's this big yellow trolley. And it's like a sack trolley, you know, like a pull-along sack trolley. And then you can lay it down flat and turn the handle up and it's a pull-along trolley. Wow! And Jules went, I forgot. So we have, we bought that when we were in Kingsport. You remember I was doing farmers markets? Yeah. And he bought that for me when I was doing the farmers markets. Needs to be sat in our storage for four years. And he was like, "Where's this come from? This is amazing." Yeah. Yeah. A good trolley. Yeah. Because there's nothing worse than they tell you to park a million miles away. Yeah. And you have to walk one by one because the cakes that you're taking for some reason you can't get them to stack properly in the boxes yeah. and all the rest of it. Yeah. and you back and forth back and forth back and forth yeah good trolley yeah yeah, yeah good plan yeah so yeah that mm. that's uh probably a good investment because yes. not only will you be able to use it for your stuff you'll be able to use it for loads of stuff <laughs> I tell you which one that I had. Um, I used to have when I was at Weight Watchers. It was like a flat pack trolley. And yeah. You used to pull it up, and the bottom used to flap open, and you just pull yeah. it up, and that was quite good. Yeah, I've I've seen those. You can get those. At, sometimes they we've do used it at Cake and Bake Show. Actually, we've used yes. that. Yeah, we did. We did. Because I yeah. might have taken it with me when I left Weight Watchers. <laughs> Shh. Or they'd be banging. Done. They'd be banging on your door. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, four years later. Yeah, trolley. I yeah. heard you mention it. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, so, what else have you got coming up in the summer? Um, weddings. Weddings. 
and um, weddings in big cakes because part people have parties in the summer don't they yeah, yeah and also anniversaries because weddings have happened in the summer so anniversaries then yeah. by default happen in the summer yeah i i must say i've got i have got more cakes than wedding cakes right this year like party cakes yeah yeah, yeah. and and you know uh, i get a lot of calls two weeks before an event and this is happening more and more mm. can you fit a cake and can you fit i had I, and like I'm, I'm fully booked now for the next month or so and I just can't take any more in but I'm getting so many inquiries is it because people are suddenly realizing they have got the money to spend on it maybe maybe or I don't just know not I don't know or they're leaving it to last minute I, be, oh. I mean I've even having late minute wedding inquiries still wow gosh so uh, I know other wedding makers that are, are fully booked and everything. Yeah. So uh, maybe they just didn't want to come to me. This year. <laughs> just this year. <laughs> even, I mean, even with weddings. That, so if you say, you you know, if you've got a month where you've got two, three or four weddings, mm. it's all down to planning again, isn't it? Make sure you've got yeah. enough boards and boxes yeah. and dowels and fondant oh. and all the things you need. Because there's nothing worse than getting halfway through a wedding cake and going oh I haven't got one of those boards so I can't do that yeah and then you have and to go out and make sure run. your kit box is stocked up yeah at the end of the season and at the beginning of the season yeah. or in the middle of the season because there's like you say dowels is my downfall because I'm yeah. forever forgetting to order them my drawer is stuffed full of dowels because <laughs> but it's, it's one of those things is that you don't you don't want to suddenly have to go out and run out and or order things late because then you start spending more money on postage then yeah. you start just your costs go up because you yeah. you panic buy don't you yeah um oh definitely so, definitely and you you're buying off amazon or you're racing up to the yeah. range or hobby crafts to get stuff that you could have ordered from your wholesaler yeah. or your or big place sort of yeah. thing so go through at the beginning of the season so yeah may the may weekend first weekend in may is a bank holiday weekend maybe sit down that weekend and go through all the orders that you've already got in your books and make sure you've got enough bits and pieces for those mm -hmm. and then order a bit more just so you know you're you know you're prepared actually that is what i'm doing tomorrow because i i, I have got um quite a few weddings coming up in the next month see may is a big wedding month isn't it yeah it is yeah. it is and um i am also moving in may yes. so i don't i don't want to be making a wedding cake and then no. be trying to pack it pack them away and be ordering so i'm gonna make yeah, sure it's I'm the order ordering. and also because you're moving you don't want to be ordering and getting orders in while you're trying to pack them away <laughs> Yeah, it's like, don't take them out the box. Just leave them in that box. <laughs> no, I'm using the boxes for packing. <laughs> That's why you're ordering so much, is it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, think think ahead and um, have a list up. Um, if you're going to be super organised, have a list up. If you need something on it, need something, you can know you're going to run out. Write it on your list. Yeah. So you can order ahead. Yeah. Yeah, have a running, a running, um, a running list of what you're going to need. I wonder something what you're else. going to say then. <laughs> have a running, a running what? <laughs> Excellent. Do you know what? Actually, so this is something that um, a lot of wedding um planners do, and I'm really interested by this because I think this is something that more of us cake makers, cake makers, should do in the lead up to wedding season. They suddenly get training. So I see a lot of them suddenly going, I know I've got wedding season coming up. I need to get to the gym. I need to get in shape because they're going to have a lot of running around to do. Yeah. And you know, yeah. what? I sometimes think we should be doing this as well as cake makers. We know we've got all this coming up and we're going to be on our feet for like long hours. Yeah. Why do we not prepare for this? Why do yeah. we not? Why do we sit there with our feet up all through April <laughs> when we should be preparing ourselves? But anyway. Yeah. I'd like to say I've been sat with my feet up. Yeah. <laughs> I fell asleep on the sofa yesterday. Um, uh, this doesn't, I don't crash out on the sofa, but I woke up 
um squat the two dogs squashed in against me I had my dressing gown on my duvet over me and I couldn't breathe and it was horrible but <laughs> it was a well-needed nap yeah yeah object so rest prepare um yes. get yourself in shape um all all that kind of also um make sure you've got like good footwear for the season ahead yes if you're in the kitchen you know all that sort of thing oh that was another thing i, I was i've written down actually so um when you're at these events you're representing your company yeah so don't you rock... you are your business yeah yeah so don't rock up in your dirty apron with a like tatty old t-shirt on and everything cake batter down the front yeah unless that's your vibe unless that's your 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 thing i don't know your hair back yeah so that you know you're representing your company you want people to go whoa look at sammy she's got the apron she's neat and tidy her nails aren't black with food dye (laughs) that sort of thing (laughs) But also, I mean, even for that, so make sure you've got decent footwear. You're good, you're still, and something else I'm going to say, um, quite often, if you go to an indoor fair, they'll give mm-hmm. you a chair. Mm. Don't sit down. Please don't sit down. Because what happens is, is if you sit down, firstly, you're not welcoming. But secondly, if someone then comes up to your table, you have to think, do I stay sitting down? And therefore, do I look unprofessional? Or do yeah. I suddenly stand up? and therefore look a little bit intimidating just don't sit down in the first place just stay on your feet put the chair away take it away put something on it put a bag on it put product on it or something just don't sit down because you then get this awkward situation that yeah yeah and plus if you're sat down there and you've got your cakes all up (laughs) high they can't see you and they don't think anyone's there Um, the other thing that I used to do, or I started to do with some markets I did, I used to take pre-orders. So mm-hmm. if you're going to a market and you know oh, you're going to yeah. be there, yeah. Adver- so always advertise where you're going to be. So if yeah. you're going to do a few, do like a nice list, put it on your Instagram, put it on your Facebook. This is where I'm going to be in the next month. Keep talking about it every week. Talk about where you're going to be and say, if you're going and you'd like to order something, tell me now, because you've kind of got the order in the bag then you're mm. not waiting for them to like casually walk past um so yeah i pre-orders is always got yeah. just advertise advertise and advertise where you're going to be what you're doing this summer yeah you know where you're hanging out that kind of yeah. thing yeah what your vibe is yeah do, yeah do you have favorite things that you like to take along to these events what as in bakes mm. um it used to be, so I used to always do cupcakes. I used to do nothing but cupcakes, and I would sell hundreds of cupcakes. Now, if I take cupcakes, they're probably not taken. Um, Rocky Road is always a good one. It's always really easy to make. You can make it a few days ahead, so that's always quite good. Brownies, people do like brownies. Cookies, not so much. I find that people don't buy cookies as much. Um but cakes, if you're going to take cakes, I would take a big cake and then cut it into slices so people can see that it was a big cake and it's all sliced. <clears throat> um, but other than that, uh, so just the classics, I would say the classics, Victoria yeah. sandwich, chocolate, coffee. Lemon. Yeah, all the classics because people can relate to them. If you, I mean, it's a bit like that I've been doing my cake shed. I will do at least three classics a week and then one slightly different and the one that's slightly different I never bake as much because it never sells as much yeah well what I found last year at jerk jam because it was um Jamaican themed you know Mm. that whole um I did Jamaican ginger slices and they flew out of the door and um that was what I actually sold out of but again the cake slices so one of the things I found as well was I made them too big, my cake. Oh. So when I was cutting them, um, it was difficult to get them into the boxes that I right. bought. And then I provided forks for them, but there was just so much cake that right. it was too much. 
Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I made them too, too big. Too, too big. And, yeah, you're right. If you've got to check your packaging, where they're, how are you going to package them? Um, mm. stuff like that. Something I would say is if you have a niche, so, example, for example, if you are a cake maker, mm. make a cake. If you are a cookie and brownie maker, make cookies and brownies. Mm. Because what you've got to think of all these things that you're doing this is you promoting yourself as well. So yeah. if you suddenly do lots of brownies and cookies and then someone comes to you for brownies and cookies, you go, oh, no, no, I make cakes. I only did that because it was a, a market and it was easy. Yeah. Make sure you're you're doing what you do So because it's promotion, it's marketing, it's, yeah. know, it's advertising. QR <gasps> code. Don't forget yes. your QR code. <clears throat> Especially yeah. if you're going to think of – with the youngsters, with the young ones there. <laughs> with the youth. With the youth. <laughs> with the youth with millennials the millennials and, and Gen Z. <laughs> <laughs> they do love a um, QR code. Yeah. I tell you what, I, it's something I also use. If you if you haven't got time to get, um, say, a Zettel or a Square or whatever, I have on my cake shed, I have a QR code for PayPal. Mm. So if you have a PayPal account and it's a business account or make your set it up as a business account, you can get a QR code. So if you haven't got a contactless, you can say to people, um, right, if you just scan that, then you can pay with PayPal and it will go straight through to your bank account. So, Well, that's clever, isn't it? Mm. I think you have mentioned that before, but it's only just sunk in. Because <laughs> <laughs> I've tried to do contactless outside in the shed. And the problem is, is my Wi-Fi is not strong enough mm. and i can't it just wouldn't I, we tried so hard we yeah. were hanging the i had an ipad that we were putting up in the top window and then putting it in yeah. the downstairs loo and all sorts of things to try and get it as close as possible but we just couldn't get it to work so the qr code is is a good that's option. a good idea do you know i was a bit worried today that we wouldn't have enough to talk about <laughs> <laughs> but I, I i think we have had when have we never had enough to talk about never <laughs> I thought something Ooh. else. Oh, oh, oh! Don't forget your first aid kit. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Let me see what else I've, so I've got planned. Oh, the other thing is, is that also. Oh, all oh, oh, my lights have just suddenly come on. Did you see that? And that suddenly lit up. Um, the other thing, because we are, because we're in the UK and we live in unpredictable temperatures and unpredictable weather. So obviously, last year you went to a festival and it was yeah. like monsoon season or hurricane season yeah. where you were um there have also been times in the summer when humidity is really really high so it might not be particularly hot but humidity is high and that gets into your buttercream and your sugar um it could be that it's really just really really hot um think about that now in case that happens because there's nothing worse than being in a hot kitchen for hours and hours and hours on end doing all this baking if you haven't thought about it so think about it now can you afford an aircon unit do you need an aircon unit is it that you can bake in the middle of the night um just get that into your head that you might need to read because when it's april and may and it's quite cool and you take on this six tier buttercream yeah cake, it sounds so easy. And then you yeah. get to August and the humidity is something like 95% and you're yeah. like, yeah, it's going to fall apart. So just think about it now and think about mm. how you can set your car up to take to do deliveries and all that sort of thing. Because um, it, it is when you get there, it is a worry. At this point, it sounds so easy. Yeah. Piece of piss. Yeah. <laughs> and then you have to put your, your wedding cake in the back of the car and go, oh, my God. Yeah. Um, and then you're driving and you stop at traffic lights. It's like, it's in the sun. It's in the sun. Yeah. <laughs> oh, don't. It's too early for that. Yes. There's a reason why I don't make wedding cakes anymore. Yeah. Um, right. Okay. Are we okay. done? Yes, I think so. I think we've covered everything. So it's time for <gasps> the, dog <laughs> the dog's like, <laughs> like, what the heck is that? So it's time for product of the week, product of the week, product of the week. Ah! Woo, woo, woo. Can it's I go first? Your, yeah, it's time for you to go first. Right. In the spirit of doing things at fairs and markets, um, so I was talking earlier about doing things like tray bakes, 
um, Rocky Road, brownies, all that sort of thing. The thing that I used to always struggle with was cutting them up evenly. Yeah. Right. So we had one of these at the shop and we never used it for what it was intended to be used for. But when <gasps> I worked at the bakery. Yeah. I'm like, that's genius. I've got one of them. Why do I not use it? It is a pastry wheel cutter. Yeah. So it's like lots of pizza cutters stuck together. Yeah. Right. And they're all like in a concertina and you you pull it open and they all pull open at the yeah. same distance, at the same measurement. Yeah. I know. And then you can run it across your tray bake and oh mark God. it and then get a sharp knife and cut it. Yeah. So the thing is, if you're doing things in fours, that's usually fairly easy, you know, you know, half and half again. But it's yeah. when you think I could get five out yeah. of that. And then you start getting your ruler out and then you muck yeah. it up and you have oh one really big slice. Oh, it goes nice. tits up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then you've got a bit that's so tiny you've got to eat it. You've, you've got to eat it, yeah. So it's, it's a, a pastry wheel or a pastry cutter and it, you can get them with different amounts of wheels on them. Yeah. Um, I think mine has got six wheels, which means it does five segments yeah you can get them seven which will do six segments mm -hmm. um you can get them all I, so i looked it up before before we start recording i looked up the one at nesbits or nisbits um 150 pound i thought that was a bit steep i don't remember paying that much amazon yeah less um so look online for a pastry wheel cutter or a pastry cutter there's lots of different ones out there ebay amazon um, it just makes cutting up your tray. That's bakes. a really good, good uh, product. Yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't remember the word then. <laughs> <laughs> what is it we do? What is it we do at this point? Oh, <laughs> it's been a day, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. So, I I've got a product, mm -hmm. and I use it a lot um, oh. because I I do do a lot of these cakes, but I don't actually know what it's called. Excellent. But, uh, <laughs> So it's the dotty oh. dotty maker. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. Um so if you were to order another one, what would you order? I I'd I'd they normally say the dotty cake. <laughs> no, if you were lovely. to order another if you yeah. lost that and you were to order another one. Um, I'd I'd look at piped dots. <laughs> so right, so what it is? What she's holding up in front of me is it it's, looks like a smoother, yeah, but it's got pimples dots. on it, yeah. And in... you place that onto your cake, and it leaves indentations, neat yep. indentations, and then you just go round and you pipe little dots onto those. I am so. I am normally I I've researched my products, but I didn't because I didn't know what it was called. <laughs> I'd like a big one. I want one with bigger dots, not big, but bigger spaced dots on it. Oh, okay, because there's too many dots on the. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. If anyone knows what it's called, could you I let bet, us know? I bet we get a message from. I bet Erica the, knows. I was just going to say Erica <laughs> from the Sugar Craft Junkies. She I is bet Erica epic. from the Sugar Craft Junkies. Because she was the one that told us what your last one was that you didn't know, which yeah, was the strip cutter thing. Yeah. Yeah. Erica, help us. She's on TikTok as well. Because I, oh. I I don't go on TikTok because I find I lose about five days. And I'll be like, <laughs> what the hell Where happened? Did that go? Yeah. But she did a really cool warming up exercising sizes for when you're doing making flowers or doing some rolling and stuff like that and I've I've actually done it a couple of times but when I've got up because I get really stiff hands in the morning so on TikTok do we know what she's called on TikTok um I think it was the sugar craft junkies oh okay okay shall I look now yeah go on go on I'm pretty sure but Erica, yeah. help us out on this one. So it's it's like it's green. What she had was green. It had a, lay, a handle on the back, and it was flat on the front. It had little pimples, and you press it onto your fondant, and it leaves an indent of where you. Oh. Oh. 
<laughs> yeah, it's Sugarcraft Junkies is on okay. TikTok. That's that's really interesting. So warm up. Yeah. <sighs> she has um, many skills, that girl. Piped. I'm going to look up piped dot tall. I hope nothing rude comes up. I'm sure. To... Oh, here we go. <laughs> it's so easy go on. when you know how. Press ice polka dot. And you can get different sizes. Oh, you get different sizes. So you can go and get a different size uh, now. Polka for cake decorating tool. Uh, and it's only, I mean, on um, FMM. One pound thirty-four. Oh, bargain! But there, there are. I should put it in my basket now, shouldn't I? <laughs> there's this. <laughs> the one I've got is number one, and there's all you can get drape ones as well that put drapes on. It's like you used to, be able to get quilting ones as well, didn't you? That yes, you I've got. I've got those as yeah. well. I've got one as well that does cushions. So I, lo I love making cushions for sofas and things like that because <laughs> they look so good. <laughs> Sorry, getting excited about making stuff. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, all right. It's all right, Erica. Thanks. Thanks anyway. But she's discovered, she's found out what it is. Yeah. Yeah. And I use it a lot as well. And I've also done uh, Mickey Mouse dots. So oh. that it was a dot with two little ears. So it just uh, gives you all the positions around your cake in, in a nice yeah, order. Yeah, you have to measure out to make sure you get it right. Yeah. So when you when you get round to the back, you don't want your dots to overlap and everything. So you need yeah. to measure it. And it's got the nice straight edge, so you can put it around the bottom or around mm -hmm. the top. And it's got a curved edge at the top. I use it a lot. Good. Lovely. There you we do go. Like dotty cakes. It's one of your signature cakes, isn't it? Yeah. The dotty one. Dotty. Hmm. Yeah, a bit like me. No comment. <laughs> right. Right. That's that's it for this week. Thank you for listening. Hope we've helped. Good yes. luck for summer. Summer is coming. We yeah. hope the sun's going to come out and it's going to stop raining at some point. If it oh no, it's raining now. <laughs> Do you know what I was? I was hoping it was going to rain today because it means I don't have to water because Jules has put grass seed down and I keep having to go and water the grass. Ah. But it didn't rain today, so I might actually have to go and water the garden. Can no, you believe it's that? It's raining here. Oh, send it my way. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So don't forget to like, subscribe, um, review. Um, be amazing. Send in questions. Recommend yeah, sending send in comments. Recommend yeah. us to your mates. Um, and thank you so much for listening because you're all amazing. Without you, we wouldn't be who we are today. <laughs> Without you, we would just be two old birds chatting to themselves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm really old this year. <laughs> oh, stop it. <laughs> <sighs> no, you're not. <sighs> right. Okay. Right. Bye-bye. 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 Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.